Welcome to the wide world of esports, a show devoted to all things esports. I'm your host, Catherine Knorr. Today, my guest is Jeffrey Weiss, CEO of Advantage Video Systems. Today, we will learn how AVS can assist your esports and gaming organizations and the projects you're working on. All right, welcome, Jeff. Hey, Catherine, good to see you. Hello, mahalo. <laughs> Fantastic. So tell us about Advantage Video Systems. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, Advantage Video Systems is about 30 years old. Well, actually, it's about 22 years old. I started, uh, I was a broadcast engineer working, selling broadcast equipment, and I was working for a company, and 9-11 happened. And I told my boss, that I got to go out and help because I was working with the Red Cross. And he said, no, I need you here. And I said, no, I got to help. I had clients in the building. And he says, no, no, you got to stay here. And I said, I got to help. And he said, no. And I said, I quit. And I quit and went off to help uh, at 9-11. At, at and I came back and I says, you know, do I want to work for a guy who won't let me help people? Or I want to start my own business. So I, I said to start my own business. And I, uh, a lot of my, I, I put up my shingle and a lot of my clients came along with me. And it's been an incredible ride. We've uh, I've been one of the leading broadcast engineers in the country, going all over the country. I've designed over 250 TV stations. I've designed hundreds of post facilities, production companies. We've designed gaming centers. We we worked uh, closely with uh, companies to put large uh, infrastructures in to some of the largest gaming arenas in the in the United States and the world. And we've, and, you know, we worked with worked with a lot of integration systems, and we've written. I was part of a company, a group of us engineers that published a book called The Media Workflow Puzzle. Uh, was that's one of the core st- canter- cornerstones of broadcast engineering. Um, I've been a board member, uh, treasurer, secretary for the Society of Motion Picture and Television Engineers that defines the standards for the broadcasting and entertainment industry. Working on uh, working with uh, other people and on standards for the industry and stuff like that. Um, you know, I've been uh, uh, have awards. I've been part of the um, National Association of Broadcasters, uh, giving speeches, giving lectures, uh, having uh, being an exhibitor uh, in all kinds of things. We're very involved in lots of organizations. Uh, we're part of the Esports Trade Association, of course. That. Uh, with Megan Van Patten and the whole crew there. Uh, we're also part of the NACAD, which is the National Esports Association of Coaches and Directors. Uh, we've been uh, uh, helping them uh, produce their conferences. And we, you know, we've been a part of lots of other conferences, such as the Esports Business Summit, the uh, Esports Bar, Esports Bar, Esports Awards. We've been, a, a, you know, really involved in the esports industry. And I've been, I'm an avid gamer myself, love gaming, you know, all my life. And so, and so we're we're what we're trying to do is trying to fill gaps in the in the esports or in industry. And so we're talking to a lot of people, and we have a lot of wonderful things that we can talk about. Fantastic. Okay. Yeah. So first, before we get get moving on, everyone will want to know what games do you play. So I play a lot of games. I, I'm a Big Magic the Gathering, a huge Minecraft. I love it because I, when I, a lot of times I go to conferences on, on online and I get bored with some of the talks and I can go off to my Minecraft and just <laughs> have two screens. And, but I also a CS:GO. Uh, I'm really good at really good at Fortnite. Not as good as uh, some people like Ninja, but hey, I I hold my own. Uh, you know, uh, I love uh, I love first per- I love you know. The first-person shooters and stuff like that are, are really good, and I love strategy card games. That's that's my games. All right, so you're the perfect person to be, uh, you know, kind of combining broadcasting with esports. So let me ask you, why is broadcasting important to esports? Because it really is the really is the foundation of what esports really does. Uh, with somebody playing a computer by itself, that's fine. But the minute you have two people playing together and you want to create engagement, you need broadcasting. You need to be able to have cameras so they can see each other. You need to have uh, you need you need to be able to switch between between different things. You need to have, you know, you you need you need to have, you know, it, without the esports, it's just some guy in his in his basement playing, you know, playing with himself. And that's and that that's a messy situation. But um, you know, the whole the whole aspect of 
uh, of gaming is lends itself and, and and really comes to the point of creating a gaming atmosphere where people can kin and cheer and and be a part of it. And without broadcasting, no one will see it. Absolutely. Um, so what projects are you working on right now in broadcasting in relation to esports? So we're working with a couple of schools throughout the country uh, to help them actually build out some of their gaming uh, design arenas. The you know the biggest problem in esports is that well one of the, one of the biggest problems is that you know these 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 people are not, the people who start esports are these gamers who are lovers and enthused and motivated as a, with a passion to to in esports, but they don't understand the broadcasting aspect. They don't understand really what it takes to become a broadcast to brought to broadcast out and to have something that could be that could be that could be shown, you know, out in there. There's a lot of little and there's a lot of aspects to think about. It's not, you know, like I was at one school and their aspect of gaming was to go out to Best Buy and buy a five hundred dollar camera and buy a a hundred dollar green screen from Amazon, you know, and you know, and and buy a fifty dollar switcher. And that doesn't really, you know, teach you the, the skills you need to understand. So when you go work for Blizzard and they have a hundred and ninety thousand dollar Grass Valley camera with a you know hundred and forty thousand dollar Zeiss lens on it, they're not gonna know how to use that. They're not gonna know how to uh, create they're gonna go they'll go to the audio engineering area and they're not gonna know how to pick a mix, mix minus so that you can so that you can, you know, for that that we need that we need, so we don't hear talk back. Uh, there's a lot of aspects that can that, that you need to understand, and most of these 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 wonderful enthused people and excited people don't understand this. And so we're working with a number of schools throughout the country to educate them. We're working on some on some really good projects, and we're trying to create a campaign that's going to really uh, change the mindset of how game playing is played these days. So there's some specific equipment that you use that yeah really benefits so why don't you tell us and show us about those sure i i, I pulled a couple of pieces of equipment aside um this one right here is called the huddle cam uh, by ptz optics and the the cool thing about this is they make two versions of this camera they make uh one version that is a usb hdmi version and the one another version which is a um which is a NDI version. NDI is is uh, is a network version that you can plug in. So you basically run an Ethernet cable from the camera to an Ethernet switch, and then you and if you have, if it, if the switch has PoE PoE, which is power over Ethernet, then you can don't have to have power to the camera. If it does, then you have to run power to it through like a USB, and you can just buy a USB heart, uh, battery pack and plug that in. But and they also make this version, which is the HDMI USB version. Uh, the great thing about the, I use we recommend these is to you know whenever you see gamers playing on they have these cameras on top of their screens so that the people can capture the player's face and stuff like that. Well, a lot of those have been traditionally you know higher end SDI cameras and stuff like that. This camera is really great because I can put this on top of a camera, connect it with my NDI or HDMI into a system, and, and then go back to the control system, the, the video village. And then I can control it with this little controller here. This controller will set up to nine settings. It also has, you know, uh, pan up and pan down, so I can pull myself back or forward, and uh, and pan up and pan left and right. It enables you, uh, a, a you know, an, an engineer to walk up and down the uh, the things and be able to adjust the cameras perfectly. So when players are moving or they're hunched down or this or that, he can. You know, from a remote location, he can get, he can frame the shots really well, and he doesn't have to go and reach up and adjust the camera. So that's that's cool things. And be, and the NDI version is really has a lot of controls that you can actually do over the network. So that's one one that's the one device that I like really well. Um, this is another device, um, a company called AV AV Pro Connect, and this is uh, what this is. This is a whole video server. So what I can do with this is I can, uh, what I, I, if I plug cameras into this, it has Ethernet plugs in the back of this. What I do is I connect this to an Ethernet switch, and then I would connect 
uh, and then I go from a, like a camera, like I can go any kind of camera, HDMI camera, whatever, and I can plug it into what's called an encoder deencoder. So you you plug it into an, an encoder system, and then the encoder has an has an Ethernet cable, so I can go a long, long distance. I can even go fiber and go super long distance. And then you can take that and do a deencoder, and then plug the deencoder into the switch, and the switch goes into here. And and this I can actually take the take the signals, and I can do a number of things. I can create a video wall. I can take all the signals and and plug them into monitors and create video walls. I can run this and, and through a switcher and 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 use it as a switcher. I can you know route the signal, so I can route it one signal to and to I, you can you can take one signal and route it to 192 places. And I can take another signal. So you can have infinite amount of routing and stuff like that. So it's a really cool little device like this. And it's very, very compact. Uh, another device that I have that I like a lot is this. This little, These are sets of boxes. This is three boxes. This is made by Blackmagic Design. And what this is, is this is great for people like you. Because what this does is this is an ultimate box. So I, if, I'm on, if I'm behind a green screen... Uh, I can actually take this and plug a camera into these. It's one camera per box, and they roughly sell about four hundred dollars for each box. And what this allows me to do is I can I can load up a background into this box, and it has the full Ultimate software, which is a hugely powerful software for doing green screens, and it enables me to create uh, you know a, a three shot. So if I, for instance, when I do interviews and I'm having uh, three cameras, and I have a wide, uh, a, a tight shot on me and a tight shot on you, and I have a wide shot where I have two people. If I have the same screen, the same green screen, it looks funky because everyone has the same background. But I can create different backgrounds and load different backgrounds in each of these, and it enables me to then do that. And I can really tone down and tone up, you know, the green screen so that I get a perfect green screen levels like what you're seeing. So. Wow. You know, you so you know you you can you you can create this whole thing, and it looks like I'm standing behind a brick wall, but I'm actually standing behind a green screen. So, <laughs> as I am, <laughs> yeah, we're both doing that. But you know, a lot of times people look at it and they get and they get little fuzzies around their head. They get they, you can really tone down and get perfectly the uh, the aspect you know the aspect of getting that uh, that perfect shot so you look much more professional which is what we all want to do right sure sure so that, yeah that's yeah. the little toys I, mean, I brought <laughs> yeah and I, I I think the green screen is you know very important for many people who are broadcasting on zoom just in their meetings you right know? and and I can you know if if we were if we were producing your your screen and we had a separate green screen, it, I mean, it would look weird if we had the same as mine. If you were in the same kind of right. room as me, yeah, that would right. I mean, the same, the same background, but and also you can look. I mean, if you look, if if you look at me, I, I, I try to find the green, the, the green phase around my body or the green segments. So if I move. I can move, and you, you know, normally, if I do this on a on a thing, you're going to see some artifacting and stuff like that. But with this very inexpensive uh, little device, you can actually tone it up perfectly so that you don't get that artifacting and you don't get that. And you know, if you're going to do anything like this, you're going to create a you know create a a podcast or a TV show like you. You know, you need to have the the really good the really correct equipment that you can that you can that you can create you know and and it'll you know it's like you know you i look at some people like i look at dr disrespect and i love the guy he's a great great guy but you look at his stuff and he has he makes tons of money and he spends and he has really very you know crappy you know engineers behind him he's not you know he does he does when he has a monitor his picture and picture that goes zoom forever uh he you know i see artifacting around his green screen you know if you if, if the the better you produce it, people will like your videos better, and they're more apt to want to watch more of what you have to offer. So you know what's interesting is that esports is fairly new, and I know you've yeah. you know you've talked about nine eleven, um, and and so what year did you kind of move into the esports and gaming area in terms of marrying broadcasting with them yeah i i started you know i mean i like i've been a gamer all my life 
but I really decided to get into it in about 2019. It's at beginning of 2019. I started investigating it. I was putting a bunch of equipment in in 2018 into a big esports arena. We were putting a bunch of Ross uh, uh, Ross hardware uh, that the, you know, and and these are hugely expensive integrations. And we were doing the installs on that. And I just said, you know, I love gaming, and I really want to create a niche for myself in this. And I see that I see there's a lot of need for someone who really understands engineering to get in here and help these help these these schools out and help them out really build out their infrastructures and teach them. And you know, and we want to help develop a curriculum so people can understand this. And so I, I so I decided to do that. I took I took the whole year to kind of really format into it, and we started a company um, called Esports Circus uh, in in end of uh, twenty nineteen. In, in, actually, in beginning of twenty nineteen in February, we were part of like the Dream Hack Conference, and we did a couple of things on ourselves, and uh, and we were part of the Dream Hack in twenty twenty. And then soon after that, the world exploded. And, you know, but but we were really, you know, we were really took that 2019 year to really to try to find out our niche and trying to find out how we can be the most, uh, we can make the most contribution. And so that's where we really started in 20, in, tw- in 2019 and 2020. And we we went on the road a lit. We 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 talked to a lot of people. We we engaged a lot of things. We did some we did some events, and then but you know the the event business is really not where our niche is. And so we kind of f- fell back into Advantage Video Systems, and kind of put Esports Circus on the hold. And so we kind of developed that. We were part of a lot of panels, part of a lot of things, uh, Esports Trade Association, Esports Business Summit. We were really in depth in being a part of what this whole industry is doing and being being as best contribution as we can. You know, I've noticed that you are quite um, uh, devoted to education. and Yeah. And I know that you have a lot, you really um, focus on continuing education for yourself. And yeah. and you seem to be quite devoted to education in schools and providing curriculum for broadcasting. How important do you think it is for students to um, learn broadcasting uh, in school? Oh, it's it's so important. You can't even it, it, the importance of because uh, broadcasting is where esports is where the money is in esports. You know, there. You know, play. You know, you can play games at home and get a and get a sponsor and give you a free computer. But that's, but that's nothing. I mean, the money is in the is in the media. Is in the the money is in the money is in the in creating a, a media that that can be licensed, and and under having understanding of the of the foundation of what of what broadcasting and production and post production is, what visual graphics are. I mean, we work with some of the biggest visual visual effects companies in the world. And building systems, we help build out Disney's uh, Marvel Studios and you know uh, VFX department. We help build out Asylum Entertainment, which is famous for Sharknado. We help deal with you know uh, dis- uh, NBC Universal, which does you know Star Trek Discovery. We help with that. We you know so we we we're part of a lot of uh, you know and if you understand what the basics are and you're able to look at, I mean you look at what the NCAA they were going to get into esports and they said well we can't control the media so we don't want to be a part of it because they knew that's where the money is when they're into football they're into football because they can control them they control the money they control them and when you control the money you control the narrative when you control the narrative you control everything you sure. know so it's. That's the foundation of what it is about. And you got to understand what the technology is and what the future of technology. The future of technology is in in IP network, is, is an IP infrastructure. You know, there I worked on the standards for what's called ST2110, which is um, which is you know the IP broadcasting uh uh, te- uh standard that every broadcasting you know when you go into when into into looking at the fox trucks and and espn trucks and all this stuff whether it's esports or regular sports they're all ip trucks they're all internet protocol trucks and they're all designing this around st2110 and about what this all is and if you don't understand this you're going to be really behind a lot in the industry of where you need to be and your and your money your valuation is going to be much less so any company out there who wants to 
succeed in esports, whether it's an esports company or a, a candy bar company or an energy drink company or a clothing design, you got to understand media. You got to create media, and if you design media that is well produced, and and you know and and has media that is that is done correctly, you're gonna your your valuation that the that that the investors and the people will put on you will be much better. If you go to ESPN Esports and you want to give them your data, if your data looks clean and looks perfect, then you're gonna get a lot more for a lot more valuation, a lot more dollars for that video than you will if it's just some iPhone video. You need to really invest in proper equipment, proper technology, and you have to understand what this is all about. You have to understand things like mix minus and what and and what a, and what a candle is, so you can understand what a can how cameras work and understand lighting. Lighting is lighting and sound are like some of the keys of what you do. You have bad lighting, you can't correct that in post. You have bad audio, you can't correct that in post. You know, you can do a little bit of things to it, but you need to have good lighting. I mean, if you if I were to show you the ceiling here, we have you know we have really good lights here you know i have quasar lights and and uh and uh different lights up here that are that are really designed you know kino flow lights that are not cheap lights but they give really good things so i my, you know if you look at a lot of people they're you know my, my facial lighting is pretty much clean well you look at some people's lighting and they have big light on their forehead and they're like you know and, the, and they have or their dark shadows underneath you know this you got to understand what lighting's all about to really get the proper lighting and you have to, you know, use a good mic, you know, like. <laughs> yeah, um, the mic, the the sound and lighting has been a challenge for me. I have to tell yes. you, I put a lot of effort into it and it's, it's, it's challenging and people don't realize how important that is. But as most of us know, who are like on Zoom all the time, we see how bad the lighting can be and we can see how we hear how horrible the sound can be and yeah. we see the fragments with the background. So, um, you know, and those are the kind of things that you notice when you're consuming media. And so many people are making money with media these days. And so I see that a broadcasting education can be valuable and Absolutely. you can do that, right? Absolutely, we we definitely we we built we we built something. We also we had a truck that's that 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 is going around the United States that we're a part of building that that brings broadcasting technology to all around to all the schools. It goes on a tour every year, and um, you know, and there's there's tons of really high broadcast equipment. One of the things that we put in there is a drone, and you say, well, what is a drone on a broadcasting? Well, you know, it, it, what we teach this drone, this drone actually has infrared sensors on it and the drone takes off and looks at radio towers and broadcast towers for and it, and it has infrared thing to look at stress points and stuff like that also broadcasting you know it, you know drones can go out and shoot videos and stuff like that so but understanding how drones really work understanding it, you, you actually need a license to do professional drone you can't just buy a drone and shoot it professionally and and not have a license you have to have a real pilot's license and it actually requires three people to operate a drone commercially it has a pilot you know, a spotter and an operator, you know, a navigator. Right. You have to have a navigator, a pilot, and a spotter. So you have to have three people to run a drone commercially professionally, you know. And there's, and you said about, you know, but, but you know, about, you know, it's like people on Zoom and they have a big light behind them and they're wondering why they're in the dark, you know, or they don't frame a shot correctly, you know. It's, you know, you got to, you got to, you know, they, they cut their heads off, you know. I mean, the only, the only people who cut, you know, it's like, it's like, it's like, you know, I always say, you know, ISIS makes horrible cinematographers because every time they frame a shot, they cut the heads off. <laughs> Great. Uh, let's show but, your let's show your website and um, yeah. why don't you why don't you while we're showing that why don't you tell um, tell people how they can contact you and what you can do for them. Yeah, so you know we are Advantage Video Systems. So you can go to advantagevideosystems.com, advantagevideosystems.com, and we're there. At, we're you know you can also reach us at 800-287-5095. That's 800-287-5095. 
And, you know, what we can do for you is we can do a number of things. We can help build out your school. That's more than just throwing some furniture on a, on, on a desk and throwing, a, throwing a, bunch, a bunch of a computer on a desk and throwing a bunch of furniture around there and putting some paint on the walls. But we can actually create a, an entire workflow. I mean, if you go look at Texas A&M school, and you look at their football team, they don't just, you know, they have, they really put a pomp and show out there that we can do. And we think that the future of esports is actually getting around of out of these computer rooms and building actually full real arenas like what Full Sail University did in in Florida, like what the University of Hawaii did out in you. They're they're built they're building a big giant arena. What Boise Boise Tech Boise State is doing. So I think that that's the next stage. And the biggest problem in building out big arenas is there's a couple of problems. One is in convincing the school to invest the money, but I think that they'll see it's a big dividend. And the other thing is there's a lot of kickback from some of the pro teams of having big esports arenas in the same city as a baseball or football team. So they're there's a bit of kickback there, but I think that's where the, where the arenas are going to go. Uh, one thing we do, a lot of schools that's different than a lot of other people, is we don't we believe that putting a computer on a desk next to a kid is a really stupid thing to do, you know, because you get things that you, kids vandalize them, they steal from them, they bang them, they put their Twitch sticker on them, they do all kinds of stuff. And we say that, you know, what we recommend is you actually take the computer and put it in a server um, server rack. And, you know, and, and put, lock the server rack up and then create what's called a distance based KVM system, which is basically a one cable that runs all your things, keyboard, mouse, monitor, headset, everything, and run that to wherever you want the computers to be. That way you can move the computers around the room. You can create a, your own workflow. You can redesign things on a moment's notice. You don't have to worry about if, it, if a computer breaks down, how, you have to pick a computer up, unplug it, take it away, find a new computer, plug it in. And that's a half an hour to an hour. With us, I hit three keys. And I have a full, I have a full, I have a full, I can, I can switch and switch computers out in less than three seconds. Faster than you get a hot dog, I can switch a computer out. So, wow. you know, that's, an, that's an incredible thing. So we have that, we're doing that and uh, creating a lots of fun stuff. You know, we're, you know, the, the, uh, and obviously the broadcast engineering aspect of what we can do with lighting and sound and cameras and servers and switches and all that stuff. There's nobody better than me. Fantastic. Well, yeah. it's all at advantagevideosystems.com. <laughs> all right. Fantastic. Well, Jeffrey, thank you so, so much for filling us in on how important broadcasting is and, yeah. and, and what schools need to do in that. Absolutely. Arena. So thank you to our viewers for watching today. And in two weeks, I'll have a surprise guest for you. See you then. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.